Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. Today we're going to do something a little different. I'm going to review a video by Dr. Todd Grande. I hope you enjoy it. This is the seven myths of the flat earth. Now, in talking about the myths, some of the myths of the flat earth movement, I'll be going through seven myths here. And many of these are really tied to what we saw in the film. And I'm going to try to tie these myths back to the film whenever I can. So myth number one. Myth number one is that the flat earth movement is not a movement at all. But actually, it is a movement, and it's also a conspiracy theory. We hear that it's just a scientific exploration, right? A theory. Several scientifically minded people working on a project. But that's really not what's happening. There is actually an us against them mentality, meaning us, the scientific community, and them, the flat earthers. And this is referred to as essentially the difference between good and evil in the film. So it's really not simply a promotion of scientific thinking. The flat earth movement is rather an expansion of ideology. And if you're trying to expand an ideology, you're part of a movement. Okay, I think I'm going to pause Dr. Grande there. This is the first half of the first myth and that is that the flat earth is a movement rather than scientific inquiry. This is very true in that the difference is this. Scientific inquiry starts off with an idea, and then they test that idea against reality. And there is no presupposition that reality will agree with the idea, and if indeed it turns out to not agree with the idea, the idea is discarded. In the flat earth, the conclusion always comes first. The earth is flat. The only inquiry that is being made is for evidence that supports the idea that the earth is flat. All evidence to the contrary is disregarded or hand-waved off by saying, for example, pictures of the spherical earth are all CGI. This is not the way science works. This is the way of movement or religion works. So let's continue on and we'll talk about conspiracy theories. Now at the same time as being a movement, it's also a conspiracy theory. It's rare to find a flat earther who also doesn't believe in several other conspiracy theories. We see this mentioned in the film around the role of the CIA and the FBI and the anti-vaccination movement as well. So when somebody is a flat earther, if you talk to somebody like that, most of the time you're going to find they subscribe to a lot of other conspiracy theories, some of which kind of go along with the flat earth conspiracy theory. For example, many of them believe specifically that the government is hiding things. If you look at the flat earth movement itself, if you look at the ideology, a key part of it is this idea that the government is hiding information that would show the earth is flat. So in terms of the movement piece and the conspiracy piece, we see that it is both a movement and a conspiracy theory. You know, this is actually a very interesting point. I've been involved in many flat earth discussions and debates. And like me, I think many of you have noticed that constant references to things like 9 11 being an inside job or at NASA having uh, ulterior motives to try and hide the shape of the earth uh, without stating what those motives could possibly be. Um, permeates these discussions. So yes, I think that there is a lot of conspiracy theory in the flat earth, and it all goes back to a basic mistrust of authority. But let's move on to the second point that Dr. Grande makes. Now, myth number two is that flat earthers are simply skeptical, right? These are just individuals who are high in skepticism. Well, scientists are simply skeptical, right? Flat earthers need to believe the earth is flat. They're part of a community. Skeptics are always looking to prove and disprove theories, and they're open to evidence that would serve to prove or disprove the theories. Flat earthers ignore evidence that would serve to disprove the theory and accept evidence that supports their theories. Essentially, a more extreme manifestation of confirmation bias. If we believe something, we tend to only look at information that supports that belief. Everyone does this. We see it a bit more here with the flat earthers. Okay, for those of you that have been following the Flat Earth discussion for the last couple of months, you can clearly see this occurring. Now, it's not that Flat Earth ignores science. 
It's just that they're very selective about what science is science to them. For example, the second law of thermodynamics, in their view, states that the Earth cannot have an atmosphere next to the vacuum of space. This is treated as carved in stone, and their interpretation of it is correct, according to them. However, if you look at Einstein or Newton's gravity, well, those are just theories. Newton doesn't work because mass attracting mass is not a naturally observed phenomenon, and Einstein doesn't work because it's based on mathematics. The fact that Eddington in 1919 demonstrated gravitational lensing of light during the eclipse of the sun, or that LIGO detected gravitrons, this is all just hand waved off. It's just a theory. Yet, the second law of thermodynamics is gospel. Myth number three is that flat earthers are simply at a disadvantage because they don't have the financial resources, knowledge about the scientific method, or access to equipment to run proper experiments. We see some good examples of how this is a myth in the film. We see that the one flat earther has access to a $20,000 laser gyroscope. We see another flat earther has access to a laser that he shot across the water. And although this experiment failed because the beam expanded too much, he understood the experiment failed and came back to do a similar experiment with a camera and a light. I would argue that many flat earthers actually do understand the technical aspects of the scientific method. They just fail to use it. So technically they understand how it works, but they do not understand the principles that drive the entire method. So they can see the small picture, but not the big picture. Now here I have to disagree with Dr. Grande slightly. Uh, while he asserts that many people in the flat earth, for example, understand the scientific method, my assertion is that those that understand the scientific method understand it enough to try and find loopholes in it to discredit science. An example of this would be Quantum Eraser, claiming that in order to be actual science, the investigator must personally manipulate the independent variable rather than choose which variable changes to be an independent variable. This is being used to discredit astronomy, seismology, theoretic physics, in an effort to suppress the findings of those fields, rather than to expand scientific knowledge. That is a key difference between not understanding the scientific method and using the scientific method properly, versus using the scientific method and a begging the question fallacy to try and disprove science, which is the efforts that we are seeing on the part of people like Quantum Eraser and Sleeping Warrior. Now, getting on to Sleeping Warrior, I think a very good example of his misunderstanding of actual science is his confusion between density and buoyancy. Density is an intrinsic property of matter. Buoyancy is a force. Submarines go up and down due to buoyancy. They don't go up and down solely due to differences in density. You have to have an acceleration acting on a mass to have a force. There is no acceleration in density. There is an acceleration in buoyancy, the acceleration of gravity. Therein lies the problem, because if you admit that submarines go up and down due to changes in buoyancy, you imply that you admit the existence of the accelerating force of gravity. Now, I think something that's very telling about this particular myth is the concept of dogmatic thinking. Uh, how many times have you heard people like Anthony Riley, Sleeping Warrior, say, I won't use the term buoyancy because the formula for buoyancy contains little g? Well, the bottom line is that buoyancy tells us why balloons rise and submarines sink. It doesn't matter whether there's little g in it or you know, an F sharp in it. it. It just doesn't matter. The fact is, it describes reality. You cannot dismiss it because it contains a term that undermines your position and your ideology. That's not the way science works. Now, another example of this is talking about curvature of the earth. In a discussion to determine whether or not there's evidence for curvature of the earth, one of the common things that we hear is, well, you're presupposing this, or you're presupposing R, or you're presupposing that. The term presupposing means that you assert without evidence. So 
Nathan Oakley's premise is not that we are presupposing a sphere. His premise is that we do not have evidence to support our assertion that the Earth is a sphere. This is ironic because in many cases we are presenting that evidence at the time. So that is what's called a begging the question fallacy. You make your premise fact without supporting evidence. So his assertion is that there is no supporting evidence for the globe, but he does not justify that assertion. Just as Anthony Riley and Sleeping Warrior constantly say, their assertion is that the investigator must personally manipulate the independent variable. That's an unproven assertion. It can be countered by stating the obvious fact that time itself is an independent variable by definition, and there's no way that we can manipulate it. Either uh, can we manipulate age or gender. We select for these things, which is how you determine what an independent variable is. You select it to change and then measure the effect of that change on your dependent variable. Well, guys, we're just over halfway through this video. It's been an interesting video to me, and I hope that my comments have expanded on it a little bit. So, signing out from Northern Michigan, this is Bob the Science Guy. Hey, take a moment, hit that little like and subscribe button down there, and uh, drop, me a, drop me a sub. I'd appreciate it. So, we'll see you again in about two days with the second half of this. Tomorrow, I think I'm going to do something a little bit different. So, take care, guys, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.